What's going on YouTube? It is the Middle School Math Man. This is part three of a series of videos on factoring. We had a part one where it was just an intro, um, basic factoring where A is one. Then I also had a part two where A was a negative one. This is going to be part three, and this is going to be where we need to factor out a GCF first. And GCF, just a reminder, stands for greatest common factor. So sometimes before we factor, there's going to be something in common with all of the numbers or variables, etc., that we could pull out, we could factor out. So if we look at number 7, you have 4, 12, and 8. Well, hopefully you can see that 4 is a GCF. We can pull a 4 out of all of those things. So if I do that, what's left is n squared plus 3n plus 2. So I pulled out the GCF of 4. So now, similar to the video where a was negative 1, this is what I have, except now it's 4 instead of negative 1 because that's what I pulled out. So now I'm just going to keep that in front, like we did with the negative 1, and then I'm just going to look at what's inside those parentheses. So I need two numbers, again, that multiply to c, which in this case is 2, and add to b, which in this case is 3. Well, this is actually pretty easy for us because 2 is prime, so the only two numbers I multiply to 2 are 2 and 1. So our answer has to be n plus 2 and n plus 1. And that's how you leave it. Let's look at number 8. So if you just look at the numbers, we have 3, 15, and 12. Obviously, you can pull out a 3. But let's think about it. A can't be negative 1. So if I were to pull a 3 out, well, if I'm just looking at this first term, if I pulled a 3 out, I would still have negative y squared left. But we can't have that, right? Because then A would be negative 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out, you might be thinking it to yourself, I'm going to pull out a negative 3. Because when I do that, now I have positive y squared. You could have pulled out a 3, but then you would have had to factor out a negative 1 again. So you're just kind of making more steps for yourself. So the signs are just going to flip, similar to pulling out a negative 1. So now we're going to have positive y squared minus 5y plus 4 in the parentheses. So I'm going to have my binomials here. So two numbers that multiply to 4 and add to negative 5. So 4, we have 4 times 1, or we have 2 times 2. So those are the only two options. Well, it's going to have to be some combination of 4 times 1. 4 times 1 is 5 when you add them together. However, my b term is negative 5. Well, if we have negative 4 times negative 1, negative 4 times negative 1 is 4, and then negative 4 plus negative 1 is negative 5. So that is going to be our answer for that one. One more example with this. Let's look at number 5. We can pull out a 2. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to rewrite. So I have x squared minus 4x minus 12. That is what I get when I pull out a 2. Now I'm going to just focus inside the parentheses, and I'm going to think two numbers that multiply to negative 12 and add to negative 4. So your options are 12 and 1, 6 and 2, 4 and 3, so out of those options, it's going to be some version of 6 times 2. It's either going to be negative 6 times 2 or positive 6 times negative 2. Well, they have to add to negative 4, so it's going to have to be minus 6 plus 2 because negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. So again, like I said, this is part 3 of the factoring series. And any time you come across a problem like this and you can pull out a GCF, that's going to be your first step. So before you even start factoring, the first thing you should see 
Is there a GCF you can factor out? And that is exactly what this video was on, how to do that.